Remember I told you we had four types of adjusting entry and one of them has what I call a spinoff? Well, this is a spinoff. This really is just another type of prepaid, okay? What types of prepaids did we do already? Well, we talked about buying supplies and using them up later on. We talked about paying our rent in advance and we talked about paying insurance in advance. Sometimes we buy assets that last us a long time. Land, building, furniture, equipment, vehicles, computers, all those things. Now, when we bought supplies, we made an entry at the end of the period to record how much of the supplies I had used up. How about my building? Do I use up my building over time? Well, yeah, okay. With supplies, could I measure exactly how much of my supplies I used up? I could, right? If I had 300, there's 90 left, I must have used up 210. How about with my building? Can I measure precisely how much of my building I'm using up? Now, I'm putting using up in quotes because when I use up supplies, for example, they're gone, right? Pencils, paper, it's gone. Do I use up my building over time? Yeah, but is it physically gone as I use it up? I hope not. That would be a problem if it is. Okay, so it's still there, but we do know that over time we are truly using it up. The matching principle says we want to match expenses with the revenues they help generate. What does that mean? If I record revenue one period, I also want to record all the expenses I incurred to generate that revenue. What if I bought a building for a million dollars? What I would not want to do is to record that building all as an expense in year one and have zero expense for the next 19 years. That wouldn't make sense, would it? Okay, because instead I'm going to use that building to generate revenue for all 20 years. So instead I'm going to take the cost of that building and spread it out in some form or fashion over those 20 years. Record part of it as an expense each year then that I'm using the building. Why? Because it's helping me generate revenue each year. Now, for our purpose right now, the amount of depreciation expense is going to be given to you. Okay? In a later chapter, we're going to learn a couple of different ways we can go about calculating depreciation expense. But depreciation expense is the amount of the assets cost that we're going to charge to an expense in the current period. We can't precisely measure how much of that asset I've used up. Instead, there's some formulas we can use for calculating it, and we'll deal with those later on. We're going to start off with a method that assumes we record the same amount each year. Year one, year two, year three, they're all the same amount for starters here. My adjusting entry. Well, tell me this. When I used up supplies, what account did I debit when I used up supplies? Supplies expense. So if I'm using up my building, you might think I would debit what? Building expense. Wouldn't that make sense? But instead, we're going to give it a special name and call it depreciation expense. Depreciation expense. Now let's go back to the supplies. When I used up supplies, what account did I credit? Supplies. So using that same logic, you might think now, if I'm using up my building, that I would credit building. But instead, we have a new account we're going to credit, and it is called accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation. Now, this is at the bottom of the page in your handout. Do you see it there? All right, would you put a highlight by it or a big star or something like that? Because this is another adjusting entry that we need to know now. It's, it's the one for depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a new type of account to us. Now, until this point, we've only had six accounts. Assets, liabilities, capital, dividends, revenues, and expenses. This account is called a contra asset. Contra asset. What does it mean if something is contra to something else? Against, opposed, opposite, for example. A contra account will always have the opposite balance from what it is contra to. Now, we can have any type of account really can have a contra account. One we're going to do in Chapter 5 will be a contra revenue account. Well, revenue has a credit balance, so a contra revenue is going to have a debit balance. They always have the opposite balance. And a contra account will always be subtracted. So a contra asset will be subtracted from the assets. A contra revenue will be subtracted from my revenues. So our first contra account is a contra asset. It's going to have a credit balance. It will be subtracted from the asset on the balance sheet then. Accumulated depreciation is an account used to sum up all the depreciation we have recorded on an asset thus far during its life. Why didn't we just credit the building account, for example, when we used it up? Well, there are a couple of reasons, but one is, is that this amount is just an estimate. We don't know precisely how much of the building we have used up. We're just going to estimate the amount. 
Secondly, it gives us an idea of the relative age of the asset. For example, what if I told you I had a truck that cost me $10,000 and it has $9,000 accumulated depreciation? It costs me $10,000 and it has $9,000 accumulated depreciation. Is that truck kind of old or kind of new? Kind of old. And the reason you could tell me that is that those two figures were in separate accounts. You could compare them, right? What if I told you it cost me $10,000 and it has $1,000 accumulated depreciation? Kind of old, kind of new. It's kind of new. By having those in separate accounts, we can get a feel for the relative age of the asset. The only time we're going to credit the asset account directly is when we get rid of it. When we sell the building, when we trade in our car, or maybe we push it off a bridge because nobody wants it, or we take it to the scrapyard, all right? That is the only point in time, and that will be at the, near the end of this course when we make those entries. Depreciation expense is how much of the assets cost we're recording as an expense this period. How much of the assets cost we're recording as an expense this period. Now, for this to make any sense, I need to tell you about something that's coming in Chapter 4. Chapter 4 deals with something called closing entries. We're going to learn that there are certain accounts that at the end of the accounting period, we need to reset them back to zero. For example, what if I told you I had a million dollars revenue on my books in the year 2013? Would I want to start off on January 1st, 2014 saying I have a million dollars revenue? Well, no, because I want the 2014 income statement to cover 2014 only. So I'm going to have to wipe out the results of the 2013 year. Same thing with expenses. If I had a million dollar salary expense on my books for the year 2013, would I want to start January 1st, 2014 saying I have a million dollar salary expense? No, because again, we want the 2014 income statement to cover 2014 only. So there's certain accounts I'm going to wipe out or set them down to zero at the end of the accounting period, and expenses are one of them. So with depreciation expense, each year I'm going to make the adjusting entry to debit depreciation expense but then right after that, I'm going to come in and wipe that account back down to zero. So what happened if I put $1,000 in at year one? I'm going to wipe it down to zero. I'll put $1,000 in at year two and then do what? Wipe it back to zero. Year three, put another 1000 in. So at the end of each year, we're going to close this balance out. It's kind of like the trip set on your car. You know, for some reason, when we drive places, we like to know how far we drove. That really doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you think about it. But anyway, we like to. So what happens? You go on your trip. And when you come home, you see how many miles you drove, and then you do what? Reset. Push the button and it goes back to zero. That's what depreciation expense is going to do. We're going to put, a thou put some money in it each year, reset it back to zero. Put some more money in it next year, reset it back to zero. Okay. Accumulated depreciation, on the other hand, is an account that we do not reset. What does it mean to accumulate something? Gather, grow, build over time. Accumulated depreciation is an account whose balance will accumulate or grow over time. We're not going to close it out at the end of the year. So what if I put $1,000 in that account at the end, during the first year? Then in the second year, I put another $1,000 in that account. Now its balance is up to $2,000. Then the next year, I put another $1,000 in. Now that account balance is up to $3,000. It's going to accumulate or grow over time. It's like the odometer on your car. You know, the odometer tells you how many miles you've driven. All right. Do you reset that, push it, and reset it to zero? No. <laughs> yeah, that's illegal. We don't do that, right? That doesn't work well for us. All right. When we go to show the asset on the balance sheet, we're going to show all three numbers, what it cost us, its accumulated depreciation, and its book or carrying value. The book or carrying value is the difference between the asset's cost and its accumulated depreciation. Now, I try to use the word carrying value instead of book value because I found when my students hear the word book value, what do you think crosses their mind first off? Kelly Blue Book is normally what they're thinking of. If you wanted to know what your car is worth today, what would you do? You go to the website, you pull up Kelly Blue Book, and that will give you an idea of what your car is worth. That is the market value. That is the market value. What we are not trying to do is to make this book or carrying value equal to market value. Really for two reasons. Number one, market values are subjective. If we got five people in the room and asked them to decide on the market value of a building, guess what? We'd get five different answers, wouldn't we? Secondly, they're not stable. Look at real estate and land and building prices lately. What have they done? They've gone up, they've gone down, maybe they've gone down, but they're not very stable. So we don't try to make our book or carrying value equal to market value because it's a moving target. We would never hit it anyway. Instead, the book or carrying value simply represents how much of the assets cost we have not yet depreciated. So here's how it would show on the balance sheet, for example. 
our regular assets. Now, land is special. We don't depreciate land because it lasts forever. It lasts forever. We don't depreciate land. But notice my building cost me $50,000. It has 10,000 accumulated depreciation. 50 minus 10 says it has a book value then of 40,000. Furniture cost me 20, has $8,000 accumulated depreciation. 20 minus eight says it has a book or carrying value of 12. When you're figuring your total assets, it's those book or carrying values you're gonna add up. All right, let's do an example. This is somewhere near page 13 of your handout, depending on your printer. We buy a truck for $11,000. My train, thank you, train, for $11,000, and we were going to record $3,000 depreciation expense per year. Again, great question. How do we figure that? We'll talk about that later on. For right now, in this chapter, it's just given to you. All right, so at the end of the first year, we need to record $3,000 depreciation. What does that entry look like to record depreciation? Debit what? Depreciation. Excellent. Depreciation expense. Remember, this is the last entry we just highlighted. And credit what? Accumulated depreciation. Debit depreciation expense to make the expense go up. Credit accumulated depreciation to make that contra asset go up. You will notice I put dash train after each one of those because we would keep a separate depreciation exp expense for each of our major groups of assets. Mm -hmm. So we'd have one for the train and one for the castle, I guess, and one for <coughs> equipment and so forth. And same thing for the accumulated. We'll keep a separate one for each of our major types of accounts. Asset. And that's my entry for the first year, debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. How about for the second year? What account do you think I'm going to debit? Depreciation expense. What am I going to credit? Accumulated depreciation. And my amount still will be $3,000. So my second year entry looks just like my first year entry. Now again, I'm making the assumption that we're using a method which gives us the same amount each year. The entry, hold that thought. It's a good question. My entry right now is going to be for $3,000. His question was, why is that entry not for $6,000? We'll see that 6000 number in just a minute. Okay? What do you think 2018 is going to look like? Same thing. Same thing. Now, again, my assumption is I'm using a method which gives me the same amount each period. Now, down below, at the bottom of that page, I am going to have us calculate for each year the book or carrying value of that train. Above that, I've given you a T account for accumulated depreciation, which is a way for us quickly to determine the balance in that account. So let's, before we can determine the book value for the first year, we need to know how much accumulated depreciation we have. So let's go to my T account and record my amount for, th for 2016, which was just, what, the $3,000? And that's all I have in that account right now. So let's go down below to the next section of your handout and let's fill this out for the train. The train cost me how much? 11,000. It has how much accumulated depreciation? 3,000. So my book or carrying value now is 8,000. All right, let's move on to the second year. We've already made the journal entry, but now let's take that credit and post it to accumulated depreciation. We already had $3,000 in that account. This year we credited that account for how much? Another 3,000. So what is my balance in accumulated depreciation right now? 6,000. Does that answer your question? Each year we record three, yeah. the accumulated balance is gonna go up because I keep putting more into that account. Let's go down to the bottom and figure my book or carrying value. The train cost me how much? 11,000. The train's cost is not going to change. Matter of fact, you could go in all the way across that line and fill in 11,000 because the cost is going to stay the same. My accumulated depreciation now is how much? Six, which means my book or carrying value is five. And then for 2018, well, we already had 6,000 in that account. How much more do we put in that account in 2018? Another 3,000. So my balance for 2018 is now up to 9000 Back to the bottom. The train cost me how much? 11 We have how much accumulated depreciation? 9 it says my book or carrying value is 2 Over time, what's happened? How about the cost of the train? What's happened to the cost of the train over time? It stayed the same. What's happened to the accumulated depreciation? 
It's gone up. So what's happened to my book of carrying value? It has gone down.